from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Ask a Dragon. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode. That's a show right after this one. You're sorry. Ask a yeah. Dragon. Not get ahead of myself. Yeah. Welcome to another exciting episode of Ask an Engineer, the show that we have pretty much every single Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Last week, we had the Ada Box unboxing, which we do four times a year. But now we're back, live and ready for action. It's me, Lady Ada, with me is Mr. Lady Ada broadcasting live from the Adafruit headquarters in downtown Manhattan. We do all the manufacturing, testing, shipping, coding, videoing, guiding, writing, supporting of all the electronic goodies that you know and love to build with. And you've got an exciting show for you tonight. One hour chock full of all the news from the maker community and more. Let's get right to it. What do we have on tonight's show, Mr. Lady Ada? On tonight's show, the code is... Card, 10% off the native store. That's the oh, new Raspberry Lord. Pi card. That's, that's the new Raspberry Pi, Pi card. Yeah. Pi card. It's the size of a business card and it's Pi, Pi card. Uh, no, card is the code, 10% off the native for store, all the way up to 11.59 p.m. Except for gift certificates, aid a box, and Code Academy classes. Show and tell people around the world showing and sharing their projects. Lady Ada will talk about what was on the show and tell this week. We got some Make Code Minute and some more from JP. Python on hardware, we do every single week. We've got some time travel, got some help wanted, some 3D printing. We have two weeks worth of main New York City factory footage. Yay. So if this is one of your favorite segments, which it is for a lot of you out there, you'll very much enjoy this. We have some new products. We'll answer your questions and we do that over on Discord, adafruit.it slash Discord. Hang out there all the time, but towards the end of the show is when we answer your questions there. We got some top secret, we're gonna give away something, all that and more on, you guessed it. Dun, dun, dun. Ask an engineer. Okay, okay. well, let's uh, let's pay some bills. Uh, first up, uh, Picard is the discount code, and that helps uh, fund Adafruit. We don't have any loans, venture capital. We're not uh, based in San Francisco. We, <laughs> we like paying people. Um, and giving them great benefits and more, so your purchases help with that. Um, Lady Ada, we do give away things as we people do. add stuff to their cart. We have freebies this summer. Yeah. We got a whole bunch of freebies you can get. Nine-nine dollars or more, you get a free Permaproto half-size breader breadboard. This uh, solderful uh, PCB looks in is the same shape as a solderless half-size breadboard, so you can take your project over to it and solder it in place thus recycling your solderless breadboard and making your project more durable i used to uh, go through the radio shack version of these when i was a kid like hotcakes uh, these are much better quality also radio shack doesn't exist next up if you order 149 or more you'll get a free sew or iron on badge we have a large collection of different badges you'll get a different one each time you place an order when you make an account uh, if you check out as a guest we'll send you a random one you might get the same one twice that's why i recommend making an account We've got everything from uh, Bitcoin to robotics to LEDs to Tesla coils to PHP, uh, all sorts of cool badges that you can sew or iron onto your clothing or backpack. Next up, uh, $199 or more, you get free UPS ground shipping in the continental of the United States. That's a high quality, trackable, insured shipping. It'll show up when it says it's going to get there. We recommend it. This is in the continental 48 states um, if you order $199 or more. And then $299 or more, you get a free Circuit Playground Express our premier all-in-one development board for learning electronics and coding. You can program it in Arduino, CircuitPython, MakeCode, Code.org CS Discoveries, Rust. I saw there's a scheme interpreter now available uh, for Arduino boards as well. Uh, Golang, all sorts of stuff. Uh, you can get started immediately because it's got everything built in from that Cortex uh, M0 chip to buttons, LEDs, and sensors. It even runs some programming languages that haven't been invented yet. Like what? <laughs> well, they haven't been invented Oh, yet. okay. But, but probably yeah. they will be. Which is cool because, no, we, we know for sure there's going to be some programming languages that we don't know about yet. True. That are, that's going to run on this thing because that's what's been happening. That's, okay. When we started out, TinyGo wasn't even a thing. That's true. Yeah. And yeah. Rust for microcontrollers. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of like how, um, you know, there's, you have friends in the future, you just haven't met them yet. You know, actually it was funny. I was looking at the Circuit Playground Express is like exactly two years old. Really? We, yeah, pretty much. We should, we should figure out if that's true. Two years old? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay. April, April 2017 is when I, late April 2017 is when I ordered the PCB. I was looking for something else and I found yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So is years that old. the date that you consider something being a born, I think when the it, PCB date? Well, no, but it, it told me that it was in the store probably about three to four weeks later. Okay. That's, that's good. 
I usually post things like this, so I'll, I'll look that up. You should look on your postings that yeah, you've posted. Yeah, I'll see when we, when we said, we have coming soon, and then we have when it's in yeah, the store. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, speaking of shipping stuff, UPS Ground, that's the one you use if you're in the U.S. Uh, Postal, if you're okay with it uh, being a little slower, making its way around the country. And DHL International is the way to go. Same-day delivery in New York City. Check out before 11 a.m. And your zip code is a place that we do same day. You can have same-day delivery. Lady Ada, we do a show and tell every single week. We did! Um, almost, it's almost uh, 10 years now on show and tell. Jeez. Um, who was on the show and tell this week and what did they show? Um, later asked. We had a bunch of folks from Adafruit last uh, last week. We had a couple of folks as well. I can go over them really fast. We had Brent showed off MQTT demo. Erin showed off her chandelier. No and Pedro just says rainbows. I don't yeah. know what that was. For New uh, Pedro, yeah, rainbows. They're rain rainbows. They're rainbows. rainbow bombs. Oh, the rainbow, uh, uh, diffu the, the, when they 3D print on the uh, diffraction grating. Um, we had uh, Christopher come by, showed off some, an audio adventure game um, that used text-to-speech. Um, we had Chris come by with a one-pixel cube that had an RGB LED button. And uh, Jeff that made a Blinka tiara. And then... This week, Erin uh, had her, uh, she just published a guide on her um, uh, event, a bicycle that she's hacking and modifying for um, events like Burning Man and other uh, music or like outdoor events where you want to like travel around a campsite um, and you want to decorate your bike. So this week she updated her guide to show how to add a fiber optic tail to the bike and uh, showed how it's like waterproof and that's dustproof and weatherproof and that's really good because oftentimes your bike can get you know parked outside during the rain or in a dust storm. No and Pedro are working on a Neo Trellis box demo. It's a sound effects box running on Circuit Python using the prop maker wing and a Neo Trellis plate uh, and it has all sorts of sound effects and they're working on it and it will be uh, probably live later this week. GP showed a preview of this week's game. It's an accelerometer based game Kind of like a marble madness game where you have to tilt um, the pie gamer or pie bag. We're going to show a video preview. We'll show a video saying, preview. Yeah. And the marble has to go through a maze. Melissa um, is revisiting and uh, wrapping up her uh, pie portal based calculator. Now with all the speed ups in display IO, the calculator looks great and uh, she'll be doing up a guide. Um, it's great if you want to build a calculator, but also how to make a user interface in CircuitPython. Dan has the first Bluetooth Low Energy Central demo for the NRF 52840 in CircuitPython. So now you can use uh, two CircuitPython boards when the NRF 52840 as central and peripheral, and you can uh, send messages between the two, sort of like a, uh, you can make networks. You probably have multiple peripherals connected to one central, so you can actually start to make uh, low power Bluetooth Low Energy networks with the NRF 52. Very exciting. Um, Katni did a demo of a guide that she wrote this week uh, called the Pi Badger. It's a library to help you make uh, badges for the Pi Badge or Pi Gamer or any other display IO board that has a couple buttons and a display. You can have your name. It can have a QR code with a destination, the people at your website. It can have a business card with your photo and uh, email address. So it's a very easy to modify badge that anyone can really easily hack and customize. Um, if you want to make your own electronic badge for an event. Yep. Uh, Scott showed a preview of um, what would happen if we had aliens make OLEDs. Now, it was just OLED support for Display I.O., which is really exciting. I know people have been asking for it. It's coming soon. And he's just kind of working out the page memory mapping thing. It's always kind of fun because it's like you, you have to go down like eight bits, but then it's across, and then it's like packed into pages, and like the pages aren't lined up properly it's kind of exciting um doing oled addressing so but he's getting there he's getting very close so probably then by the end of the week we'll have oled display io support and also i squared c support for display io since oleds use i squared c and then people will be able to take advantage of all the um display io ui stuff that we've done yeah. such as fonts and shapes and logo you'll be able to run logo on an oled so that'll be fun uh so they can really make a apple II clone in there. Um, all uh, with CircuitPython. And then uh, from the community, we had Roberto come by with a really sweet 
fully 3D printed sound wave helmet bust that has like LEDs and sound effect board. And it's running an Arduino and it has a trellis selector board for different sound effects and also different lighting effects. So if you're like a huge Autobots fan, I guess this is like the thing you have to build now. And uh, TG Techie came by and showed off uh, his new work that he's doing on making uh, easy to design and update GUIs for Pi Portal. So also more display work come in at you from the community. Okay. All Circuit Python. All participants on the show and tell get an As Seen on the Show and Tell sticker. Email us if you're on the show and you want a sticker if your kid just have a parental guardian like entity do that for you. It's part of our Adafruit live series of shows. JP's show is tomorrow. And here is that Marble Madness preview that Lady was talking about. Next up, we're going to do some MakeCode Minute stuff. So um, right now there's a lot of stuff going on in the world of MakeCode. We're probably going to have our newsletter specifically for MakeCode going out soon. Mm -hmm. So just keep an eye on the blog because there's uh, a ton of people that are making games that are out there. And then there's a lot of new hardware, including some of yep. ours. Well, there's MakeCode Arcade hardware and there's also MakeCode Classic and Maker hardware. Yeah. I mean, between like Lego and Wonder and Microbit. Yeah. And they support Spark from Arduino boards. And MakeCode is doing um, kind of like summer campy like projects. Yep. So there's Chibitronics, there's a robot, there's a, a micro bit, there's Circuit Playground. So you'll have you'll have a lot to do. Yep. Um, and then here is our MakeCode minute. In today's Make Code Minute, I want to show you how you can use the Adafruit Circuit Playground Characters extension inside of Make Code Arcade. So you'll see here I have this character, this little Adabot. How did I get it there? I didn't actually draw that from scratch. What I did is I headed to Extensions, and in the Extensions you'll see Circuit Playground Ch. That's Circuit Playground Characters. So when I click that, it adds that extension to Make Code Arcade. And now, whenever you create a sprite, I'll go ahead and create a new one. When I go into the sprite editor in the gallery section, you can see our usual stuff. And all the way at the bottom, we've got a few of these characters. So, how about let's bring in a Blinka? And you can add that character. And now, how about we'll change the uh, movement button and the A button to adjust our Blinka character. And now, oh, did I do something wrong? <laughs> She's not moving. Why isn't she moving? Move Sprite 2 with buttons. I should probably put that after. There we go. Try that again. So now I can move my character with buttons and I can press A to create some hearts. And I didn't have to draw the character from scratch. I can just go into this gallery and pick from some of our favorite characters. And that is how you use the Circuit Playground characters from Adafruit inside of Make Code Arcade. And that's our Make Code Minute for the week. And don't forget to tune in for JP Show tomorrow at 4 p.m. Yes. Eastern time. Okay. All the candle gifts you That's can right. eat. All right. There's a lot going on in the world of Python on hardware. Let's catch up on all yeah. that's happened the last week. We did, our, we did our show last week, but there's just a lot. There's so, stuff every yeah. week. So uh, some Moo news. Uh, Moo is one of our favorite editors. And the Moo update for this week, uh, there's a few things. Yeah. I wanted to show yeah. and talk about all of it. Yes. Um, the first thing for Moo. They renamed... Yeah. Adafruit mode, Circuit Python mode, which is good. There's so many boards. There's so many boards, and they're not just Adafruit. And they were like, "You're right. You should call it Circuit Python there, mode." There's so many boards now. They also added ESP MicroPython mode. So if you have an ESP32 yeah. or 8266 running MicroPython, 
Moo might be the easiest way now to manage files and uh, upload code to your ESP running MicroPython. That's exciting. Okay, and then this is neat. There's a new mode in it. You probably noticed from that other screen that um, we'll go back to it for a second. It uh, has web. Build simple websites with the Flask web framework. So if you know Flask, have you heard about it? Yep. You could do that. Famous for making it really easy to make websites yep. um, within Python. So for like many, many sites, it kind of handles all the details for you and lets you just get to the part you want to do, which is hosting data. Yeah, the web mode makes it simple and easy to create dynamic web applications using the Flash web framework. As the screenshot shows, users are currently able to edit Python, HTML, and CSS files, run a local web server, and view their website in a browser. So you do some code like this, just a few lines, and then you get something like this. Yay. All right, so you want to go to madewith.mo. OK. Um, or sorry, code with um, This is a really neat project. This is hacking calipers, and it's used for cancer research, and then it sends the measurements to a spreadsheet. Yep, so you don't have to enter them by hand. Yeah. It just shows up like a keyboard, um, and it's using CircuitPython to uh, get the data from the calipers and then um, type it out as an HID keyboard. And this is from Caitlin and Max. And Max um, who's, we've covered Max's stuff before, so he's at Stanford and Caitlin's at Stanford, so I think they teamed up for this project and uh, uses the, um, like, SAM32 board. Yeah. And it's CircuitPython, so that's really cool. Next up, uh, we showed this. This is uh, the Dragon video. This is a YouTube by Gamer and CircuitPython using a mix of manual triggers and a piano manual for the step in the section. Yep, this is what we did for the Halloween. Uh, so we it and on it. So uh, maybe we'll see this soon in the system. Yep. Or just look outside. There was a poll that someone did on Twitter. They said, you're designing a new board and you want to make it compatible with third-party hardware. What is your form factor of choice? Comment if others. Thanks for retweeting. So uh, Feather came in, number one, 51%, 168 votes. Lots of good commentary and conversations in that thread, so you can check that out in our newsletter. We also have um, a couple good guides. Yep, this is from Davis Dells. This is a pie paint. So this is a good guide if you're, you know, first off, you can make a painting program, but also if you want to learn how to use Display I.O. with a touch screen and uh, draw to a bitmap. So you want to have like a, a raw bitmap display with up to eight colors in this case, and you want to draw on it as a canvas. So this is a good guide for showing how to do that. Yeah. Likewise, we also have a guide for the turtle uh, graphics. We basically made a version of turtle that's just like the turtle that comes with Python, which is kind of logo-like language, um, but ported it to CircuitPython. It doesn't cover everything that turtle has, but it does cover a lot. And um, you can make beautiful graphics and uh, download your favorite Python turtle or logo scripts and run them. Um, again, it's a good display.io project showing how to uh, draw on a canvas. Uh, and this is a guide with showing the, the cursor project. So if you remember, we had the choose your own adventure for Pi Portal, but that required a touch screen. Well, if you don't have a touch screen, but you want people to be able to select user interface elements. So in this case, we have the cursor library that can take the joystick or a D-pad from a Pi game or Pi Portal, and then use the A or B button to basically allow you to, to draw a cursor around uh, and uh, select it. So the same for the, it's also used in the uh, Pi Painter. If you don't have a Pi Portal, if you have a Pi Gamer, you can paint um, using uh, the cursor instead. And uh, so this just shows you how you can um, drag and select. We also have a guide for Pi Badger. Uh, and if you saw on the show and tell, um, it's basically how to take your Pi Badge and make it into a smart badge for uh, going to events. You can display QR codes in your name you can use any font you like, including Unicode, so you can have foreign language support. Uh, you can also show a photo of, of yourself or some other icon that, that represents you and your email address as a sort of a business card. So it's a good base for making smart, um, but uh, fun badges that you can hack at an event. Next up, CircuitPython sneaks its way to the SparkFun Quick Keypad. There's a new CircuitPython library for the SparkFun Quick Keypad. It's now part of the CircuitPython community bundle on GitHub. Thank you, Gaston, uh, AKA Four Sticks. 
And in other SparkFun doing Python news, they now have um, Python libraries which are compatible with CircuitPython boards, Raspberry Pi boards, and other Linux boards. You can check those out on yeah. GitHub. And this is exciting for us because, you know, SparkFun was like the, the bigger, older brother um, all this time. And then to see them doing Python stuff, that's good for us because we're like, yay, more, more electronic companies doing Python, more people in the community doing Python, more hardware supporting Python, 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 Python. Python. Well, if you look there in the photo, that's even a CircuitPython running board. Yeah. I think that's their um, turbo board yeah. um, that can run CircuitPython, and then it can plug into these quick connects, which is a cute system that does I squared C. So now, um, I think the idea you know, that we kind of came across like a year ago, everyone's catching on, which is like, oh my goodness, maybe let's just have the same Python code that can run on microcontrollers and on microcomputers be the same code, wouldn't that be awesome? So we're not constantly supporting two different versions of every library. And that's what we wanted to avoid and why we did Blinka. Um, so we could have our code with GPIO, I squared C, SPI, or UART run anywhere. Okay, in the beginning of the show, you probably saw uh, this video. So uh, this, what is this? this came in from Discord and uh, community members said, hey, there's this uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that's on, I saw it on television or whatever streaming device. It's like a soap opera, and, but with superpowers. And there was uh, a circuit playground that powers one of the devices in there. So um, I did some quick, quick screenshots and then I have a little bit of video. So you can see a circuit playground, probably running CircuitPython, um, inside of some device that needs to do something important. Yeah, probably okay. save the universe or destroy the universe. Next up, congratulations to Andreas, whose video made less than a year ago. Time to say goodbye to Arduino and go on to MicroPython, Adafruit CircuitPython has now become the number one video out of all of his videos uh, just last week. So that's kind of a big deal, um, not because people are comparing one to the other, but there's so much interest on Python on hardware that a site that was, I'd say, normally associated with lots of Arduino stuff, this shot up on the charts for Andres' channel. So check out the video. It has a lot of good um, things that are going on now. It's also seven months old, so a lot of things have changed. CircuitPython Day is 8-8-2019. We have a couple events and more coming up. There's uh, one on August 3rd. Brent's going to be doing a talk at NYC Resistor, CircuitPython. And there's also the CircuitPython Day at the Indi India Linux Users Group in Delhi at the Delhi Technical University for Women. That's on August 4th. We'll have more stuff going on in posts leading up to August 9th. Uh, right now, this second. Right now. Right now. At this very moment. At EuroPython. If you're at EuroPython. There are people helping each other run these badges. Uh, Deshipu is doing workshops. There's a few other people doing workshops. Um, you get one of these badges if you're at the event, and there's also the workshops. I like how the electronics are hidden underneath the, you, like, you don't yeah, see the chips, cool. and it's all, it's all hidden. They're okay. cute. Um, there's some coverage from uh, Teardown. So CircuitPython, all the things, covered uh, Scott's workshop Game and, Boy uh, and presentation so we posted up links to that and more there is a speaking of hackaday there's a hackaday io project that shows all these little add-ons that you can use with uh, badges and this is the defcon 27 circuit python add-on and um, you're able to use their standard connectors and then program it with uh, circuit python this is neat this is a uh, featherwing Game Boy advanced cartridge <laughs> Yeah, this is an FPGA that lets you control a Game Boy from a Featherwing, I think. I'm a little confused, but it looks really cool. Yeah. Also, coming up, uh, Pi Ohio is going to be here soon, and you can see Katni's keynote and more. So check out our site as well as the events section of our newsletter. This is Arturo's uh, keyboard Featherwing. There's many, 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 many prototypes. Yep, yeah. he's working on making the ultimate Circuit Python NR52840 okay. faux berry. And this is Circuit Python NRF52840 LCD display tutorial. Demonstrates how to use a character LCD and color TFT displays on the NRF52840 with Circuit Python. Yes, this is neat. He also shows how to load it onto that dongle from Nordic. Okay. So these are really good videos. Check them out. Next up. Um, Blitz City DIY has a sewing in NeoPixels, and you can see Circuit Playground with Circuit Python on there. And that is Python on Hardware News this week. Yay, Blinka! There's a lot.
Blink, 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 blink. Okay, uh, this week in our time travel, I just have one thing. This is just a reminder um, that, I, that I have to get out there. So uh, we, have, uh, we have lots of people who work around the world with us, but we also, like most of us, are here in New York City. So we are looking for a PHP developer. You don't have to know PHP that great, but you just have to know like enough things. And also realize that the job is to write. Yeah, ev eventually PHP. you would be doing a lot of PHP. Yeah. But you can get in the door with just a little bit of, a little bit of that. Um, we have the job posting on our site, jobs.adafruit.com. And uh, we don't usually have a lot of openings. People don't, don't leave. So this is this is kind of a big deal for us. It's, so, a, it's a rare occurrence. Yeah, we, we have some great remote applications, and we might visit the revisit those. Um, thank you for all the folks who turned them in. Thank you. And sent them in, but we're also looking, of course, for someone in house here in New York City. So let us know. Uh, check out jobs.adafruit.com. And if you're willing to relocate, let yeah. us know. That's so. It's like, even if you're not living in New York, if you're like, oh, I yeah, don't live in somewhere. New York, but I want to uh, relocate yep. to New York. Uh, Queens and Brooklyn and New Jersey are all great Apply places to live. Apply at Adafruit.com. Yes. Okay, open source hardware. Um, a little bit of open source hardware news. What's the news? It was announced. Two things. One, One. open source hardware summit is happening. And this is the 10 year anniversary of it. We were at the first one. You keynoted the first one. Oh, that's right. I was there. Oh man, and was that 10 years ago? Probably. Oh geez. Yeah. And uh, they're celebrating 10 years and uh, it's going to be in 2020, and the date is March 13th, 2020, at the Tishman Auditorium, the NYU okay. School of Law, and it's located at 63 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10003. So that's 10 years, 10 year anniversary of open source hardware. Um, I and, will do another talk. I and then can it's revisit. 20 years of, I made the keyhole logo that eventually went on to the OSI logo that went on to all these other logos. Wait, what's now, that What's that logo all the way to the right in the bottom? What is it, is it like a brain? Yeah, it's like open, open, open brain. brain. Yeah, I, I, each one of these logos is from an open source effort. So it's neat because it started out as keyholes and then it worked its way to Gears. Gears was the open source hardware community selected logo. Yeah. And then you can see other ones. I like the chess one. The chess one's really nice. Chess one and is really nice. And then there's a combination of two, then there's OpenCV, and then there's another one that's like half, half OSI, half hardware, half software. And then I think the, the brain and the gear is like open hardware for Brains. machine learning or something. I don't know, yeah. So anyways, that's, uh, that's 20 years of this logo, which I have an odd coincidence that I'm part of. And then this is 10 years which is the gear logo, yeah. which is a community logo, and then there's also the Oshawa certification logo. I think which it's is a different. great, I think the idea of having this keyhole, I mean, if you look, it's like having a keyhole cut out of a shape is very evocative. Yeah. I like the open uh, cube set, it's like a cube with the, it's like, a, you the know what it is. The cube set one is pretty cool. It's a, very, it's a very flexible logo. Yeah. All right. Lady Ada, we have 100. Uh, <laughs> 1,000. 1,915 tutorials. Okay. We had 100 a long time ago, but now we're up to 1,915. We have quite more. Okay, what's on the big board? Okay, so we had a guide, a guide from Radomir about using the stage game library on CircuitPython. So if you want to get started on making simple games and demos, um, check out Radomir's guide. We have uh, using uh, Python, your own adventure for PyGamer PyBadge. That's that guide about um, how to use the cursor library to uh, create uh, user interfaces that let you press things instead of just from a touch screen. Um, we had a guide from last week on 3D printing on diffraction grading sheets to make these beautiful rainbow effects. Uh, that was a really cool project from Known Pedro. Um, people really liked it. And shout out to the person who originally came up with the idea, who I cannot remember, uh, Sean Lee, I think. I'm probably getting you it wrong. You checked the guide. I checked the guide. Uh, and then, um, uh, Drac, uh, Matt Goodrich, did a cool guide on how to install an Apple II emulator on your computer and you can program in Logo, just like I did when I was a kid, uh, on uh, your Apple II that's running on your computer. Um, and then if you're like, well, that's really neat, but I don't want to have to install Apple II software, you can check out our CircuitPython Turtle Graphics Guide, which is how you can um, basically uh, we have a port of the Turtle library, as I was talking about earlier, which is a, a Logo-like um, version for Python, but it has support for colors and you could do like all sorts of other cool stuff. I mean, it's logo for Apple II, we did a lot, but you can do a lot more now, uh, 30 years later. Um, to check that out, you can run it on any of our CircuitPython boards. We have a mini guide from JP on how to submit guides 
to the Make Code Arcade front page, if you've written a um, game in Make Code Arcade and you think it's cool, uh, it's pretty easy to get it onto the front page so other people can try out your game as well. Uh, all you have to do is post to the form in the right way and, and do all these little things. And it just takes you step by step through how to do that. We have the Pi Badger event badge um, guide on how to customize the Pi Badger library. Uh, so you can make a, a smart event badge um, that is programmable and updatable from any computer. And of course we have that Pi Paint drawing program in CircuitPython. Uh, so you can uh, see how to make um, a drawable canvas in Display.io and also like use cursor and select different colors and different pen thicknesses uh, to make a little painting program for uh, your CircuitPython board. So a lot of Display.io uh, yeah. cursor and UI guides coming at you. Yeah, we, had, is, we had a little video of this is what um, people remember Logo as. Yeah. It's a little turtle go. Yeah, little go turtle. So this is basically what you do, except we don't have a turtle. We just yeah. have a little square because we didn't. We don't have enough pixels to draw. You can turtle. make stuff like this. Eee. Yeah, this is the uh, That's color super fun. rainbow hexane. Okay, so we're gonna catch up with two weeks of Maine York City factory footage. So Adafruit Factory, take it away. What should I be watching? Yeah, this thing. Watch this.
giant pogo pens. Yeah, they're cool. And last up, we have two um, sunrise or sunset videos because uh, last week it's was Ada Box unboxing. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna some sunsets. These it's are very nice. We've had some very good sunsets recently. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. That was the 4th of July. Yay, fireworks. Let me get this one. That's funny that uh, the picking places kid. They saw the fi the. They can see fireworks. The elevation. picking places. They love fireworks. Always get a good view. Yeah. All right, and uh, let's move on to some three D printing. So we have uh, two speed up videos. Yep. One from last week and one from this week. So we're gonna play them back to back. Yes, right. First up, pie case. Don't forget, every Wednesday, you can learn how to make all this stuff and more on 3D Hangouts with Noah and Pedro. All right, Lady Ada. Well, before we get into new products, let's uh, talk about the code. It's Picard. Pie card. <laughs> and the reason is um, there's a movie poster type thing looking for this CBS show. Um, it's going to be called Picard, and he, he, has, he has a wine thing, and he has a dog. And the dog has a collar, and the dog's collar says number one. And so I immediately had to tweet about this, and I thought he would contact dog. And you dog that's would a communicator say, badge? He would say, hello. Co come in, dog. Come in, number one, dog. And dog would say, hello, this is dog. And then I was thinking, I wonder where his fish are, because he had you these fish, his fish in his ready room. You don't think the fish made it? Well, I think he made one of these little aquariums out of wine bottles, because he's retired now. And yeah. then I was thinking about Data and his cat. And then um, I made you watch Rathacon. Yeah, and, they had um, that weird it had, animatronic dog. It had, like, monster dog. Very Winston Studios dog, I but don't know. But then Worf had a pet dog, which is kind of a pig with a horn. Yeah. And then Spock had a cat in one no. of the episodes. Well, he, he, was, he picked up he, his cat. He was hanging out with a cat, which is cool, because I think Spock likes black cats. And then there was this dog that they just stuck a horn this on. This was just a dog with a with they a kind of phoned this one in. This one was... And Not then very. in the animated series, Spock had a dog. And then no one ever talks about Janeway's dog, Molly, ever. Wow, I didn't even know about that. Ever. I talk about it all the time. Really? You're like, Phil, please stop talking about Janeway's dog. You're constantly <laughs> talking about yeah. So anyways, that dog. is uh, the reason why the code is Picard. So 10% off everything in the Adafruit shop except for virtual items like gift certificates yeah. and Adafruit subscriptions. So now you know why. And so I, hope, uh, I hope you've learned your lesson, everybody. <laughs> Why'd you, ask, why'd you ask about that don't code? Don't ask about what the code means. <laughs> yeah, all right, so let's do this. Okay. Okay. We've got some new products this week. Okay. Yep, we're back with new products. We've got a uh, Noobs 3.1 SD card. Not actual size. Not actual size. <laughs> it's huge. Um, so the... Um, New Raspberry Pi 4s require Noobs 3.1. We have a bunch in stock of 3.0 because we don't know about the new Raspberry Pi until everybody else does. And so we just made a new uh, product ID for uh, this SKU, which is uh, the SanDisk Edge 16 gigabyte 
class 10 card um, that uh, is ready to go for Raspberry Pi 4 and below. If you don't have a Raspberry Pi 4 and you are okay with uh, saving a couple bucks, we put our other 16 gigabyte noobs cards on discount, so you can pick those up for less. If you want the official Raspberry Pi HDMI cable, we got them. We have these. These are, yes, these are the official Raspberry Pi over molded cables. They come in white. Hopefully we'll get them in black at some point. Uh, they are micro HDMI to HDMI cables. They're good quality cables. They have, you know, the HDMI Ethernet support, even though they don't do Ethernet over HDMI uh, for the Pi 4 as of yet. Uh, I don't know if they ever will. And um, yeah, the only thing to note is that the connectors are kind of chunky. They're really nice over molded connectors, but there may be some cases or uh, some setups where you can't have such a chunky connector, right. uh, especially if it's flush against a flat uh, background. So like some TVs, if, if the cable has to be very thin. It works with the Pi case, the official Pi case though. It definitely works with the Raspberry Pi case. I'm saying the thing that you plug the HDMI cable into, yeah. like depending on your TV it, yeah, and yeah. monitor. I see. Um, I understand. Yeah, if it's if it's like if the cable really fits in very flush, this might be a little bit too chunky. But okay. it's been fine so far. Um, we have this right angle adapter that goes from 1.1 millimeter uh, inner diameter to the standard uh, 2.1 millimeter, 5.5 millimeter outer diameter. This is pretty much used for the uh, voltaic solar panels that we have stocked um, to make them fit into something that takes a standard DC barrel jack. You plug this adapter on the end, you see, and it's a tight fit, it's a snug fit, but you fit it on and then you can plug it into our solar charger. Okay. So we had a, a longer cable. Uh, this one's right angle, some people might find that handy. All right, we got a couple of these. Resistors, so there's a couple of resistor values that we had been missing. So we now have 100 ohm resistors. So if you want a pack of 2,500 ohm resistors, for about 75 cents, you can get that. These are your standard uh, 5%, um, axial carbon film resistors they're great they have the nice thicker leads so they fit into a breadboard nicely i've noticed that some people when they go online to get low cost resistors they have these really thin leads and they don't yeah. they are too loose in a breadboard these have the nice standard thickness leads okay and, and uh we also got 1k so we've been missing 100 ohm and 1k ohm resistors so now we have both all right next up uh, we also have an add uh, additional uh, plug, uh, these panel mount plugs, which I really like. Um, you know, you only have to drill a round hole to attach these to make a panel mount adapter. Um, they're fairly low cost, and you can plug whatever cable you want on the other side to make you know, your custom setup. So just showing it off here. Um, this one has USB-C on both ends. So on the input and the output, it's both USB-C. And USB-C can be used for power, you can use for data, it can be used for peripheral, it can be used for host. So if you have a USB-C system, this one plug does it all because you can plug any USB-C device and then plug whatever else on the other side because it's a cross-compatible, uh, reversible cable connection. So I think this is the last of the set. We have USB-C to A and A to micro B and B to you know, A host, whatever. Now we have C to C, which is kind of the last and uh, hopefully we won't have another revision of USB um, connector types for a while. USB 4. Yeah, I know. Coming soon. Oh, boy. Okay. For the iPhone 30. Okay. <laughs> um, we've got this. And this this looks just like a... This looks like a You know, tube. nothing's done gone here. This is just... Uh, wait, wait. Oh, no. Look it's how cool glowy. it is. This is super cool. So we've had the neon LED strips for a while. And uh, we had them in like red, orange, pink, green, blue. And uh, we also had a chunky NeoPixel strip, but now we finally have a, um, this is a 12 volt LED strip. It's not NeoPixel, so it's not individually addressable. You have to PWM the red, green, and blue component, but you do get RGB LEDs in it. So they finally managed to figure out how to get these to be uh, good enough quality. Um, so yeah, you give it 12 volts and PWM the red, green, and blue to ground, and you can change the color, uh, just like any analog LED strip. So it could be good for decorating stuff, making neon signage. I'll show it off on the overhead. It's extremely flexible. It's also bright, so it's gonna it's, mess with the camera. Yeah, I know, the camera is just like, what are you doing to me? Um, it's extremely flexible, so you can make all sorts of cool shapes with it, and extremely smooth, there's no hot spots which is really nice. You get a very consistent color all the way through. And remember, the whole strip will be the same color. There's no addressable LEDs. We're working on getting a skinny addressable LED version. 
but this version is a 12 volt power and you need uh, three MOSFETs to control it. It's one meter long and it's totally weatherproof. So I wouldn't like put this underwater for long term, but for outdoor usage, if you want to decorate your bicycle or your backpack or uh, you know some event thing or your float or your costume, uh, this will do the job very well. And of course you can set the color to be any color you like in the world. Okay. So that's flexible LED neon RGB. Yay! Let's recap it. New product recap, Lady Ada. New, 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 new recap. We have 16 gigabyte micro SD cards with Noob 3.1. So if you have a Raspberry Pi 4, you'll need this version, the class 10 card. We also have the official Raspberry Pi micro HDMI to HDMI connector cable. It's one meter long and it's from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. It's great quality. We have an adapter from 1.1 millimeter inner diameter to 2.5 millimeter inner diameter DC plug adapter thingy. Uh, it's a right angle. We have a straight through style and this is a right angle style. And this is, works perfectly in design specifically for use with our uh, voltaic solar panels that we carry. You plug them in and then it adapts it to 2.1 millimeter DC standard jack. We have some more 5% axial resistors uh, we have them in 100 ohm, as well as one kilo ohm, 25 packs a piece. Handy. We have a new uh, up, uh, additional version of our panel mount plug that's so easy to use. Uh, you just need to drill a round hole in anything and attach this on. This is one is USB-C to USB-C. So you get C on the input, C on the output, and we can use it with data, with power. You can probably use it with display, display port, although we haven't tried it. Uh, it's just a pass-through, peripheral host, whatever. Uh, but it's panel mount, so it makes easy panel mount projects. Um, an update to the NeoPixel, sorry, the non-NeoPixel neon strips. Uh, this is an RGB analog strip. It's three 12 volt channels of red, green, and blue that you have to PWM yourself, but you can have any color you want of uh, this neon strip that people have liked before in single colors, now tricolor for any output possibility. Products. The glowiest of new right. products. And uh, don't forget the code is part. Anything in stock, 10% off and to midnight time ish, or when I remember to turn off the code. And um, hello, there's a dog. Hello, um, dog. All right, let's uh, do top secret. Yeah. So from the vault. Okay, so I'm working on some more hardware. Yeah. We've got some top secret stuff. Including so some. first up. Eyes. This I so see like what you're doing there. This is some um, eyes. I so I actually know. got these boards back so I can show them Ooh. off. Cool. I haven't brought them up because I just put yeah, them together. Right. Okay, cool. When we put them together. But there'll be two eyes, yeah. two displays, and then this is the design of the eyes. Okay. So it's got these like whiskery things going on here. Yeah, I don't Cool know. stuff. Not out yet, don't ask. Okay, next up. Next up, we also have a ruler. Uh, this is an update to a ruler. This time it's a smart ruler. It runs Python. Python it's rules. A Python ruler. Yeah, do you want to show it? Yeah. That's so here good. you go purple. It's going to be gold in the end, but for prototypes, it's hard to get gold. So yeah. I got silver. Well, the silver looks kind of nice too. And so you've got all the standard uh, ruler accoutrements, centimeters and uh, decimal inches, uh, because people have asked for decimal inches. Okay. And uh, it's got a trinket and zero built into it. You got anything else? That's what I got. Okay, back in the vault. Back in the vault. All right, um, we're gonna answer your questions over on Discord. So go to adafruit.it slash Discord and we'll answer your questions there. That's where we like to answer questions because there's like eight different chat rooms. Yes, um, but you can go there. One of the questions that came in, uh, I, I store them up. Yes. Is, uh, can this work with uh, Apple Thunderbolt? If it uses USB-C, this is a pass-through, so it should just work with anything that has a USB-C connector. Yeah. It doesn't have any termination or resistors or anything inside of it. It's just USB-C to USB-C, which is good because it makes it simple and useful for anything. Okay. All right, what is the device? There was another uh, question. What is this device here that was attached to the panels? That's our solar charger, so it'll charge a battery from a solar panel. Okay. 
Uh, this is one of those ones that um, I told you we were going to get a question about this. Um, is heating throttling issues? What's your input on Pi 4 issues, uh, high heat throttling issues, USB C compliance, and do you plan to go USB C for your de design? So I'll start with the last one first. You'll see some USB C. We'll see some things. more USB C stuff. It's kind of coming along. Uh, we have one breakout. It's tough because right now USB C connectors are still quite expensive. And so um, I want to use it, but it's very tough when it's like, are, do people want to pay more for USB-C? Yeah. No, and then it's not for sure that's true yet. Heat and throttling for Pi 4. Um, if you're doing something really intense, check out um, Hackster's benchmarking. Yeah. Because they were doing machine learning things, and they said it was beneficial to it, have a little it fan. It is, but you don't need it, right? Yeah. You don't need it. It'll always throttle. Um, and if you're only doing small bits of high, you know, heavy computation, like you open up a browser, you play a video, and then you don't play any more videos, you're fine. Um, it is a fanless computer. It's designed to be fanless. It doesn't need a fan. However, you can, we sell these little $2, $3 fans. You power it from the, the five volt adapter. Whereas uh, Pimeroni also has a shim. You can add a fan and that will definitely um, solve it. But then you have this like, kind of loud fan. So if you're using it for like desktop purposes, you probably don't need it. If you're doing it for like machine learning inference, it won't hurt. But that was true also of the Raspberry Pi 3, like adding yeah. a heat sink. Um, or adding a fan also helped the Pi 3B Plus and, and Pi 3B. So this has been true for a while. It's good, you know, of course, is that the, the more powerful it gets, the more heat sinking will help. But that's true of any computer. And then last up, um, for the Raspberry Pi 4, uh, Evan, I think, talked to Ars Technica or CNET or something, and they have a thing about how they did USB-C. So um, the charger that Raspberry Pi has works. Yeah. But check out the... Um, you can just search Raspberry Pi for USB-C and look at the, it, I forgot which publication talked to Eben, yeah. but they had, like, he's like, here's what, here's what this is, here's yeah. what to use, I remember when here's we what's a, compatible. When we made our breakout, we did do the thing, we had the two different resistors, I remember thinking it's odd, but they do explain why it's for reversal and stuff. You, you actually, have, they have two pins for everything, and some you can connect together and some you have to keep apart, so the CC pins... Um, you don't actually want to cross connect them because they're and sometimes you do one thing to one pin not to the other because that way the cable can detect yeah. which Someone way it's going can find in. that article and put it in the chat yeah um, do we have any electrovert machines no I don't think okay. so tabs or spaces I, w whichever you like okay uh, and then how do you print the serial monitor in Adafruit IO with a feather huzzah um, you can't print a serial monitor directly to Adafruit I.O. You can send messages to Adafruit I.O., but you can't. The serial monitor on Arduino only goes to serial monitor. There's no, unless you write some other software, it's only going to go to the USB serial monitor on Arduino. Okay. Um, you can, all right, got that, so I'm going to delete that. Got it. Um, next up, uh, hi. Just saying thanks for the Pi 4 I won on your show. Now I need to tinker with it. Any project ideas? Yeah. So I'm going to do a Pi 4 right now. I would actually run some of the cool machine learning stuff because yeah, it's fast try the, enough. Yeah, try the machine learning projects. You can put a camera and a display on it. Yeah. And then you can try recognizing things. That's a good... I know, like, RetroPie doesn't work on it yet. There's, you know, you're still going to have a couple weeks or months of things getting fixed on the Pi 4. So I think, um, yeah, just try running it as a computer. All right. And I think that's going to be... It for all the questions. Gonna, yeah. Gonna do some things. Do you want to give some away tonight? Um, yeah, we're gonna give away a uh, RGB neon strip. Oh yeah, really? Yes. What are the rules? Rules are if you've ever won something from this show before, you can't win again. Only one winner per my lifetime. Uh, the first person who calls on the magical phone and answers the three questions. Uh, will get a RGB neon strip, which is great. You can use it with any microcontroller, my computer. Very fun and very glowy. Um, we'll put the phone number on the screen, and then I'm just going to call. When you when you call, I'm going to pick up and say ahoy, ahoy. Oh, yeah? And then I'm going to ask you your name and where you're calling from and a project you're working on or you want to work on. And if you can answer those questions, you win the prize. All right. Well, here's the phone number, and I'm going to go. So remember... Call if you haven't won anything before. Yeah. And yeah. you're going to win this cool thing. i got to post the phone number in the, the various chats. Look at how rainbowy. 
So that's what they're going to win. I am, yes. It's a pretty big deal. One meter of rainbow NeoPixel. It's so bright, it doesn't show up very well. All right. Very flexible. Okay, call. Well, it's, always, it's delayed, you know. I know. Call. Call, 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 call. Whew. I don't know. Uh, you know, last week I changed some phone settings. I don't want to. I don't want to check. Oh, there wait, wait. There you go. Hold on. Okay. Go to the overhead. Okay, I'm gonna pick it up. Yeah, pick it oh, up. Oh, hi, hi, hi. Hello. Hello. Congratulations for calling the phone number correctly. Uh, you're the winner of a fabulous LED strip. What's your name and where are you calling from? Troy, and I'm calling from Arizona. Hi, Troy from Arizona. Well, congratulations. You've won this LED strip. If you want to claim it, all you got to do is email support at adafruit.com. Uh, that's S-U-P-P-O-R-T at adafruit.com and say, hey, it's Troy from Arizona. Send me one of those product number four two four fives, and they will do that. Got it. Okay. Well, what's a project yeah. you're working on, or you want to work on? Uh, I'm actually working on a remote water level using a M zero feather proto. Mmm. Okay. And the heat tape. Sounds. That sounds like a good project. Maybe you want to display the water level in the tank of water, and you could use this LED strip to do that, or maybe just decorate it or flash red when the, there's too much water or too little. But that sounds awesome. Well, uh, don't forget to email support at Adafruit to win your fabulous prize. When you build your water tank, come by show and tell, and we can, we can check out your cool project that you made. All right. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Troy, and don't forget to email support at Adafruit to claim your prize. Thank you. Okay, Thanks, bye. Sir. Good night. Success. Okay. Right on time. All right, well, that's our show for tonight, Lady Ada. Yes. All right, special Good. thanks out there to uh, all the Adafruit community members. Thank you, everyone in Discord who's helping out. Thank you, all of our Adafruit remote team members. Thank you to the PHP programmer that we haven't met yet that we're probably going to hire. That's yes. what I was talking about. There's, yes. There's someone someone in our lives that time has to catch up with it. Correct. It's kind of neat. And then, I've written quite a bit of PHP in my time. You did. And in fact, it's originally all my fault. So. Yeah. Yeah, you, a lot of your code is still inside of the Adafruit site somewhere. Yeah. Um, on Adafruit. My Python 2, my PHP. Yeah. At the um, time, that's what we had. We didn't. There was no Rails didn't exist. Special thanks to Jesse May, who's running things behind the scenes. Thanks, Jesse yeah. May. And then um, special thanks to all the Adafruit team members that helped make this thing go. So we will see everybody next week. Um, regularly scheduled show as usual. I don't think we have any guests. Okay. So we'll see everybody next week. Here is. Your moment of Zener. Your moment of Picard. Well, your moment. Well, well, he's just here. I mean, I kind of like. You like Molly the most. In memory. Yeah, I know. It looks <laughs> just like. <laughs> like Janeway's just like, who's gonna feed that dog while I'm trapped across <laughs> the galaxy? Did anyone remember to feed the dog? Oh no. All right, here's your moment of Zener. Bye.